Joel, if you'd like to come up. Uh, Joel Wilson from the University of Greenwich. Good afternoon. Um, my project is um, to do with energy simulation. Um, it's with the University of Greenwich and we're working in partnership with Ford and the in uh, Engineering and Physical Science Research Council. Um, the aim of this presentation will be to showcase our method of uh, discrete event uh, machine energy usage simulation by, uh, via load profiles using WITNESS. Um, so what I'm going to look at is an overview of my project um, and then I'm going to look at why are we doing energy simulation. Um, I'm going to look at uh, the energy power, pro the power profile and how we collect that data and how we, uh, when what it is, and look at some of the uh, and look at some of the uh, advantages and disadvantages of that uh, system, and then show um, the development of the load profile simulation method from early models to uh, the line simulation. <laughs> and then uh, show some of the results of the manufacturing line simulation. Um, so my project is, my project uh, is to develop uh, techniques to optimize energy efficiency at the Dagenham engine uh, plant by use of simulation. Um, it's a PhD project um, and I'm in the first year at the moment um, and it's made up of three basic phases. The first phase is to collect the energy data from the plant. The next phase, uh, which I'm busy with, these first two at the moment, is to design energy simulation and then use that energy simulation to find optimization techniques. And this is where the original contribution can come from. So why are we doing energy simulation in the first place? Well, energy simulation uh, primarily can be used as a, as a cost-saving tool. And for that, for that reason, it can be used to uh, combat things like rising energy costs, legislation, pressure from legislation like from the EU to reduce the amount of energy that's being used. Also, it helps with things like corporate image and corporate social responsibility. Um, so what is energy, what is a power, uh, power data logging um, and what is the, po uh, the power load profile. We uh, collect energy from the machines by use of a, a data logger. Um, these machines go into the electrical panel and usually what they do is they sample the power being used at a certain frequency. So that could be once every second or at higher frequencies if you like, but the machines are very expensive. And what it produces is a graph something like this, where you have your power on the vertical axis and you have time on the horizontal axis and the discrete measurements are plotted <coughs> as discrete points on the graph and you can then join them up using a line graph or similar function um, and this gives you two pieces of information it gives you an idea of the behavior of the power use of the machines and it also gives you your energy use, because your energy use is your power multiplied by your time. And <clears throat> when I talk about the behavior, it allows you to pick up things like these spikes here, where you have these large positive spikes, where you've got a big energy use spike. And then you've got a negative spike, where you've got something like regenerative, regenerative braking in the system. What typically happens is, that information is then taken and averaged and put into the simulation as an average. And what that does is that eliminates all of this data that you have here from these load, load spikes in the middle during the cycles. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to reproduce this profile but while the simulation is running so that the simulation itself behaves like a machine does in reality. Because when, you, when you're at home and you put your kettle on, what's happening instantaneously is you're drawing power. And then once you switch it off and you know how long it was drawing power for, you can go and calculate the energy. And this is basically what I'm, I'm aiming to do here. So I, I've had to skip that slide. Um, so what are the advantages of doing this? 
Well, first of all, the advantage is that you can show the, um, the overall power usage of a factory or a line or a set of machines by simulating the actual profiles. And I can show you how, how this works. I'll start this and stop it and then explain it. Uh, what we have is I have four machines in this uh, simulation, essentially. I've uh, decided to simulate four CNC machines all working together. I've added a, a part that's coming in on a uniform distribution every few seconds. And what's happening here is the part is loaded into the machine, and as soon as the machine starts to cycle, it starts to produce this power profile. And as soon as the next machine receives its part, it produces the next power profile, and so on and so forth. And then the simulation goes on to give other data, like the cycle time, the number of cycles that have run. Um, it gives other information, like the energy usage per part, um, the total energy usage, not power. This is something I need to fix. Um, and the average power being used. So of all four machines together. And it shows other information like the live power data that's being produced at the time of the instantaneously. And what this can do is it allows you to be able to sum this information here and it allows you to then produce a, a, another profile of the information of all of the machines added together. So what is the relationship between all of those machines? Um, and I'll let this carry on running for a second. So you can see that as it's running, it con continuously produces the power profile. And that information is essentially the same as going out to the machines and measuring the power from a group of machines. So my next my next uh, challenge was to take the way that I had done that and transfer that to a full line simulation. Um, and that wasn't very easy. And what I needed to do was I took a, a simulation from John's team that had already been built. And I designed a, what they call a designer element that I was able to click and drag into the model that then ran through that model and changed all of the elements into basically an energy simulation. So I was able to take a model that was already validated against the productivity data and then turn it into an energy simulation. And this runs in a similar fashion. So the profiles that you're seeing here now are from separate machines in different parts of the line. So each one of these profiles comes from one machine in each one of these four operations here. So it's just to show that the simulation, power profile simulation is occurring all over the factory, and, um, all over the production line in this case. So what are the results, what are the results that I can get from this particular system? then I, have, I can produce a power profile of the, um, a single machine running in the simulation. I can produce a power profile of a sum of machines, as I mentioned, and as a sum of all of the machines in a line or eventually in a factory. Um, and then also I can produce energy totals that can be calculated from those profiles as either a post-process or they can be calculated at uh, particular state changes within the within the model running. So first I'll look at the power profile. This particular power profile is again being plotted as um, power usage here on the vertical axis and time in seconds on the horizontal axis. And this shows four CNC machines and a gantry within, a, within an operation. Um, and it shows their power, the way that their power profiles um, react, um, behave with each other. And I was able to then look at what happens when you have a, a situation where two machines have a peak power load at the same time. 
And this is what typically occurs. You'll have a sudden rise from the average here of uh, about 60 kilowatts. You have this increase in usage for a short time to almost 120 kilowatts. And then it carries on. And I thought, well, this could be useful for myself and for other people like uh, electrical engineers to come along, run this and go, well, what is the, what is the, um, what is my line going to use in terms of its impact on the energy supply system? Um, and it's also useful for me because when I make any changes, I can go and check that I haven't done something to the way that the machine's using the power that's going to cause an overcapacity problem. Or I can suggest removing capacity where it's not being used. Now, this is what can be output in terms of energy. And what I'm doing is I'm using, um, partly I'm using uh, Witness's existing energy tools, and I'm using some of my own code in the actions. Um, and what the code in the actions does is it stores the cycle energy for me in this column here called by quality, quantity. And uh, the energy data is uh, for the idle use is stored in the by use column. So I can look at this information and go, well, this particular simulation is for an eight hour shift and I've used 20 kilowatts on one kilowatt hours on one machine while the machine is idle. So I can look at that and go, well, that's the same amount of, of, of energy as a house uses in an evening on one machine in one shift. So I can see that there's something there that I need to have a look at. And if I make any changes, I can go and look at the load profile to see if I've made any, have any issues with that as well. So I tried to show a uh, project overview um, of of my project, uh, the reasons for energy simulation, uh, some of the way that the data is being logged and the electrical load profile, and advantages of uh, load profile simulation method. Um, I've shown how I developed the, the load profile method uh, is a discrete model, discrete event model, and um, I've looked at briefly at some of the results uh, so far from that simulation. Um, that's all. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you.